What's up, everybody out there in Grip World? This is episode 94 of This Week in Grip, and it's me, Napalm, with Alan Hynek and James Rodriguez. We've got a bunch of stuff that we're going to cover today, pretty interesting stuff, so we're glad to have you on board. Make sure that you give the video a like. Our goal is always to get at least 10% of the views in our number of likes, so please go down and hit that thumbs up button right now. Also, if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe. We're talking about doing some really cool stuff as we near episode 100 of This Week in Grip, and you will not want to miss anything. So be sure that you hit the, the subscribe button right now, and go ahead and hit the ding-a-ling-a-ling bell so that you get a notification every time that a new video comes out. Um, we've got three main things that we want to talk about today. The first thing is something that just happened at Sorenex, the Sorenex facility, uh, this weekend, and it's called Summer Strong. And uh, this is something that has been going on for several years at the Sorenex facility. I know that James has been there before, and uh, I was there in 2011, and uh, it's it's grown tremendously since since I was there. James, when were you there the last time, dude? Oh gosh, uh, the last time was two years ago, so it would have been uh, 2017. But I've been four times total. Uh, the first oh, you've time been I four went times. Was, I didn't. I okay. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've been. I've been to. Let's see. They had the one at his gym when he used to have the gym in the plaza there in Irmo. Yep. Yep. Um, I went to one of those. Uh, I went to one that they had at this little sports arena nearby in Columbia. Then I went to another one that they had at the University of South Carolina. Um, and then I went to the one at the new for, uh, Sornex facility uh, two years ago. So, Awesome, man. So lots awesome. of them. Yeah. yeah, cool, dude. So uh, I didn't realize that you'd been to four of them. I was only at the one in 2011 where they did uh, – where, where Rich Williams went for the clean and press of the inch dumbbell – and then it was Tex Henderson versus Andrew Dernia in uh, pull-ups. So Tex is like 350 pounds or something like that. So Dernia had to put like 200 pounds or uh, maybe 100 pounds on his body to equate to Tex Henderson's uh, body weight. And yeah. he, he came really close, or maybe even he did beat uh, Tex in, in – uh, and rolling thunder, double rolling thunder pull-ups. It was, it was <laughs> rolling thunder pull-ups on top of it. Yes, rolling thunder pull-ups. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Yeah. 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 I've always said huh. Andrew would be great to get on an arm wrestling table doing uh, rolling thunder pull-ups with a hundred and something pounds added to them. Yeah, that's well, do you oh, know that's that he went ridiculous. to like he went to like Tokyo or someplace else yeah. in Japan one time. Yeah. Yeah, he took second. He went to like this uh, sort of celebrity kind of arm wrestling event they had out there. And he was yeah. telling me he took second to it, but the guy he took second to had a little bit of experience, so he was kind of, you know, he, I think he probably got out slicked a little bit on the table. Sure, I, I It bet. probably wasn't a strength thing, so. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, so uh, that was also the year that Chad Woodall went for the double old school Yorks pinch uh, and didn't quite get it. Um but I got a message from Chad this morning. He was there and did some pretty crazy stuff. And uh, he did, let's see if I can get it all. He did old school Yorks in one hand and then the original blob in the other hand. Mm -hmm. And then what else did he do? He did, I got to go back to the text messages because I can't remember exactly what he did. And I want to try to. I want to try to mention it all. Of course, I'm outside because it's beautiful weather. It hasn't been good out, like, for months here in Pennsylvania, yeah. so I can barely see my phone screen. So I just got It's raining in, like, 45 here. Oh, awesome. Oh. Well, take yeah. that. You always have the nice weather out there. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, right. Um, so, yeah, so he took a, he did a pair of old Yorks and then the original blob. Then he did a 45-pound York with a shallow hub and did a lateral raise with it, like a like a side lateral raise like he would normally do wow. with a, a dumbbell. Yeah. Then tough. this one didn't come through earlier. This must have come in, like, when I got into better service or something because he did a, a, a pinch of a wide 100-pound anvil deadlift. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at this right now and wow. see exactly what he does here because I didn't even see this until now. 
So he's, you can see he's spanning his hand over the top of it, lifts it perfectly level. Beautiful. Um, got a picture here with him and Pops, Richard Soren. And then he says, while I was playing around, I picked up the 173 Jowett anvil several times and the old York's right and left several times. And both originals, um, double deadlift, I didn't get those on film. So by the sounds, he put on quite a, a spectacle at some Quite a grip show. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, was, and then the other guy I, that I saw post stuff was J.L. Holdsworth. You guys know J.L. Holdsworth? I don't. But I, I knew don't. the name, yeah. but I had I had no idea that – I thought he was a powerlifting type. I had no idea the guy did, did grip at all. Right. He – so, actually, he he was at the 2013 – Mighty Mets in in Columbus at the Arnold. He got into grip through Andrew Derniat somehow, and he found out about Mighty Mets and um, you know shot some videos with Brad Ardry, if I remember correctly. And mm-hmm. they uh, submitted him, and they got approved for competing at Mighty Mets that year. So he he was into it for a while, and um, he even ran a, a grip contest in November of that of 2013 called Thanks Gripping that I went out, went out for. Um, and he did real well. Real good on blobs. Um, really, really strong on rolling thunder. Uh, definitely no grip problems for him. Of course, he was like, I don't know if, I don't know what his accolades would be in powerlifting, but, I mean, he was a tremendous powerlifter. Um, and then he put up a video lifting both the, the Jawa Anvil, which 100, weighs 173 pounds and has that crazy weird shaped Anvil mm-hmm. Horn and the original Fat Man Blob, both at the wow. same time. Which it didn't look hard for him. Yeah, no, that was crazy. Yeah. I had no idea. He's yeah, normally, yeah. you know, when I think of people like that. Yeah, I, I see guys that are going to reach down and go for that and just have it be stuck there and be like, oh, what the hell, you know? Right. <laughs> but yeah. it just popped right up. I, I had, I had literally no idea. I was surprised. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, that is came right up for that him. That he hasn't done too. grip in like a couple of years. So. Yeah. No, whatever he's whatever he's doing is working, carrying over anyway. Strong boy. I mean, it just you know it pays to be just totally strong too. And, oh yeah. You know yeah. he doesn't have tiny hands or anything. He's able to get a good latch onto the onto the horn and get his hand over the blob, and that's that's how they come up. He also posted a video of Derniat doing uh, some like hub rows with a forty five pound hub and then some extra weight added. And then I've never even thought of that. A hub row. That's hysterical. Yeah, I haven't either. I've, okay. Well, I know what I'm trying to do next time. Okay. <laughs> we know you love those hubs, Alan. Well, that sounds fun. I can't believe I never thought of that. I cleaned one once just because somebody said, hey, try this. and yeah. But nobody ever brought up rowing it until now. Right. <laughs> you don't even see that on like, Instagram or anything. I mean, that's yeah. a... Yeah. Huh. Wow. So okay. If, cool. If, if anybody listening has any more information about some of the cool grip stuff that went down at Summerstrong, then... Leave a comment below and maybe even a link. Let us know who was there because chances are there was more stuff that was going on. I mean, both Chad and JL said there was stuff going on that he, they weren't able to get on film. So it would be interesting to see what else took place. You hear? You guys hear of anything else that might have gone down of significance at the Summer Strong as far as grip is concerned? Uh, no, I, I did didn't. Not. Yeah, the only thing I heard was just sort of, who some of the attendees were going to be and, and who was there, just um, from John Von Plinsky. But yeah, I, I wanted to go this year for for two reasons. I wanted to I wanted to finally lock out that Jowett anvil because I've never done that. I've had it up and it's just really awkward, especially for my little hands to grab. Uh, but what isn't awkward is those Zuber's plates, those 200 pound Zuber's plates. I wanted to at least give a shot to just try out trying to. Uh, the farmers walk them, you know. Ah, if yeah. uh, Pops would let me take them out of the, the brackets there, I would like to, to farmers walk those, or at least attempt What's it. So. That's funny to say that. You know, how, how is he with some of that equipment? You know, it's like he he keep those old blobs in, like, some vacuum-sealed container, and, you know, you got to, like, no. scrub the Frito juice off your hands before you can touch them? Or no. How does that? <laughs> no, he's actually really cool about it, like, He's, he's got, like, he, the lobby of that place is, like, the most amazing museum you've ever seen. 
of, of old weights of his new place. I mean, it, it's really like if you've ever been to the York Barbell Hall of Fame and you walk no. around it, no. I mean, it's like that, but it's like there's, there's, it seems like there's even more history than that in the lobby. And there's a little upstairs area with a balcony. And even up there, he's got like this, this like wagon where the axles for the wagon are like made with axles. And then it's got uh, 45 pound, like old school Yorks as the, as the, the, the tires. I mean, it's just <laughs> anything that you could think of that is, that, is, that is old and vintage in terms of weights. I mean, I'm pretty sure you could find just about any brand there from like Victor to Good to Ivanko to York. I mean, he's just got like, it, it's, it's a pretty amazing place. Just, just the lobby is like just an unbelievably fantastic museum of weightlifting. And his thing is, is like, all that stuff is set up in this one grip area, and it's just out in the open, and just have at it, you know. Oh wow, that's yeah. I would have figured there'd be like you know, like invisible laser beams and like this grid fast. You'd blow smoke and see it, and try to like, <laughs> you know, and big vault yeah. doors. No, yeah, I had no idea you could just go in and and give it a crack. Wow. Yeah, he's got like an application right process or something. Yeah. I'll be damned. <laughs> yeah. You're clean. I mean, with all those kind of goodies. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's great. I mean, it's, it's, it's a really, it's a, I mean, you could just probably walk around and look at the weights for more than an hour if you wanted to just really, if you were really sort of an aficionado when it came to, 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 to old vintage plates and stuff. But yeah, he's got like stones. I don't know how big the stones are, but they're kind of like guinea replicas he's got there. Uh, he's got uh, like old anvils, like right when you walk in. So it's, it's, a, it's a great facility. I mean, it's just massive. It's just so big. It's unlike, you know, it's, it's unlike any facility that he used to have Sorenex at in the past, even when he had it at the University of South Carolina in their weight room and stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it just blows that away. So. Wow. I got I to gotta get out there sometime. That was, uh, it'd just be impressive to see that. Oh. If yeah. I ever um, lift lift a fat man blob, that was something I wanted to do: is make arrangements to go out there and try to take a swing at the old blob, and yeah, uh, uh, see what would happen. So, huh? Cool. Yeah, That's neat hearing that. Yeah, the, the last time I talked to Pops, he had said to me like, you know, if you guys want to come down some weekend, just you know, give me a heads up and maybe we'll put something together. You know, but uh, it's just you know. Sorenex for me, like it'd be different. It'd be it'd be like different if I was going to get CEs or something. Like a lot of people there, like most of the attendees are getting, you know, they're getting continuing education units. But yeah, you know, I'm just oh. there to to lift stuff, and it's like, you know, I mean, the price is up to one hundred and fifty dollars a day or something now. So it's a little bit excessive for somebody like me. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because you don't you don't carry anything that would require like a fitness or strength conditioning. Uh, not anymore, you, right, James? No, not since my twenties. Yeah. yeah, so it's yeah, it's been forever. Right. See, yeah. for me with my CSCS, that would that would fit in perfectly. So it would really justify Perfect. the trip. But, yeah, yeah. But I just I, I, I actually wanted to go down this year. But I, I couldn't make it happen. I was in New Jersey on Thursday and Friday, and then I had to come home and do stuff with the family yesterday. So it wasn't in the cards, unfortunately. Um, and then, yeah. like, there's been some years where I didn't even know what was going on until, like, day of. So yeah. just, just poor awareness of... Oh, was it of, not held, like, the same time every year? Pretty much, I Close believe. Close to. Yeah. Close to. Like okay. Late May, early June. Because it was originally done for uh, Pop's birthday, which is in early June. So... Ah, they used to have it around then, but I, it, it's kind of gravitated towards like third or fourth weekend in May now. Okay. For the last few years, yeah. Yeah, Alan, you got to get to Sornex, and you got to get to. Uh, I would definitely suggest going to York Barbell sometime too. Oh, yeah. absolutely, cool. absolutely, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, Sornex have... was really, really high on the list for me. It was yeah. just. Uh, like I said, I, to, to show up there and, and try something that I can't even lift like in my basement would be pointless. I'd really like to conquer that sucker here first and then make the trip and do it, you know? 
Because yeah. that would oh, be, yeah. you know, that's that's awesome. You know, it's, it's like a, a Denny Stone lift, if you will. If you can't lift the equivalent weight at your house, you're not going to go to, you know, and, and, and lift it over there either. So sure. I, I yeah. want to make it worth my while. But, yeah. Well, yeah. well that's Speaking cool. That, that sounds like a good a, turnout. Speaking of that, I actually saw Mark Haydock or somebody broke another world record for the whole team. He did. What's up with people doing, like, the just the normal deadlift position now? technique instead of doing like the split in the like yeah like jefferson the jefferson position. type of yeah yeah i don't know but i saw that too and um he broke it by i think six seconds or something or seven seconds he it, it was like a 46 second hold right so he broke it by a good bit his former don't record. those stones come in and smash on your legs doing it that way didn't look like it it didn't look like it dude it looked like huh. they take like an extraordinarily narrow stance Something way okay. narrower than you would take for like a deadlift, and then it didn't look like yeah. they swung in too much. I know what you're I, saying. I guess I thought the like, I thought the split stance was to eliminate that, so they wouldn't come in and right be squashing yeah, on you. People, so, you know. I see people training it the other way now, even with their their Denny replicas and stuff like that. The, the Denny ring on a yeah. loading pin and all that jazz. So. See, strength wise, I would think that would be easier on the body like that. You know, it just you'd be contending with the. It would for me because with the, I with the rock hitting me. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah. I wouldn't even be comfortable trying the Denny's with that twisted up technique because I, I I think it would murder my back. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Well, speaking cool. of murdered backs, another another topic I wanted to bring up. Did you guys watch any of the what is it? APL Arm Lifting Professional League's World Championships. Last Some weekend? of it, yeah. So, look. The team, a lot of people were excited about going over. It was a lot of people did fantastic. I saw like Clay and and mm-hmm. Eve and um, multiple Tanner. people had had more than one medal. They were putting it together in a pizza shape. It was freaking awesome, yep. man. Oh yeah. yeah, fantastic time over there. But you know, once again, we we talked about this in. I went back and looked. It's episode eighty-five of this week in grip. And that was the show that we did lockout versus uh, crossbars. And I lost mm-hmm. count of the number of lockouts that were given good calls, but they were clearly they were clearly not not per rules. Like they just yeah. were not. They either weren't paused, or they beat the down call, or it was just obvious that they weren't legit lifts. And like it's like the the. It's like the side judges, they might not might as well not even be there. I didn't see one time where a side judge held up a red after the the front judge held up a white or gave him a down yeah. call. Not a, not a single time. It didn't happen one single time while I was watching. It very well could have happened at some point when I wasn't watching. Maybe you guys saw that, but did you guys pick up on any of that at all? I mean, and I'm not bitching, you know, some people constantly get gifts in these contests, and that gets a little annoying, but, you know, it's really about the fact that it's obvious that these judges are not capable of discerning mm-hmm. or they're not comfortable of giving someone a bad call on some of these lifts. It's just, mm-hmm. there's just no doubt about it. What All did right, you so guys what think? If, what if we, well, this is what I would say. Like, if, 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 if we took two crossbars and we put them on the outside of, say, an axle, for example, like right at the ends of the bar, how high do you think they would have to be for someone, say, five foot five, five foot six to lock out? Man, I don't know. I, I'm yeah. so bad at that, I don't know. Alan, what do you think? I'm not sure. Um, you're talking fashioning them. We we briefly talked about um, having crossbars on an axle one time with them, something that would be hanging down. Is that what you're asking in particular, James? How high yeah, to make a good lifter? The way I see it is it's like, yeah, I mean, there were certainly questionable lockout calls there. Jed's absolutely right about that. But it's like if we did have crossbars, I know some people aren't big on the aesthetics of crossbars because it's a big deal to them. But if we had crossbars and somebody had the grip strength, which is what we're trying to measure, to yep. lift said implement up to the crossbars or to one of the crossbars, if not both of them, depending on how we want to do this, and then set the weight down under control. They had the grip strength to make the lift. You know what I mean? 
I, but I, I'm with you, Jed. If if the rule is lockout and people aren't locking it out and are getting you know good calls, it, then it's yeah. Then it's like now we're we're creating kind of an unlevel playing field unnecessarily. Yeah. Well, it's just it, it, it's frustrating for two reasons. A, it's like the the judges. It's probably three. Judges don't know the rules. Maybe they don't know the rules, right, or what mm-hmm. to look for. B, they they don't have the guts to say no bad call and the other reason it's frustrating is like i see the same guy constantly get good calls when there's no way i would call that a, a good call and and it's not that he's not getting it to lockout it's that as soon as he's at lockout he loses the grip and it like the bar starts dropping down and okay. uh you know it's it's just when when you know their pr pulls for him a lot of times so, like, basically yeah. a lot of the PRs that he's getting are bullshit, but at, even bigger than that is the fact that there's other people pulling those that, you know, you know they need the points. So, like, yeah. these points are being given to this certain person over and over and over and over and over, and they're not – it's just blatant. I don't I – don't, I mean, I don't know how he keeps – he puts the videos up. Like, they're perfectly good calls. Nobody says a word. It's, it's, it's just – Okay. I, I just don't under, or is it like a political thing because of who he is that he gets the down calls? I mean, I saw dozens and dozens and dozens of excellent lockouts, guys. Excellent lockouts sure. on the axle. Fantastic yeah. lockouts. All the way to lockout, stand there perfectly erect, no movement of the bar. Once the, guy, once the judge's hand goes down, then they set it down. I saw dozens of those by men and women. And then, yeah, I, you know. I can't remember who it was, but. Somebody had a really good lift, had it all the way up to the top. It might have been Ardo, and I, I, I can't remember what implement it was, but he had a really good lift all the way up to the top, and he was holding it there, but he hadn't, I guess he hadn't pulled his shoulders back into lockout, and he got no call on it. And yeah. I think it would have been a PR. Gosh, this was, a, I guess it's been a couple of weeks now. And, uh, yeah, so it's like, I guess in, in cases like that, it's, it's incredibly unfair if, somebody is getting calls like that, but not yeah. everybody is. And right, it's like, right. if, we, if we call it lockout, then it's got to be lockout. Uh, the person in question, does this person know? Does that, has anyone said to this person, like, you know, maybe you got a good call there? Uh, I don't okay, know. we're being really vague here. If this is who I'm thinking yeah. of, then, this, then the, the answer, I believe, is yes, because he, is, he has denied himself things in the past things that would have been submitted. I, yeah. I think he'd look okay. back and, and recognize that his lifts didn't meet specific organization standards or perhaps even his own. So he, he took it upon himself to, to withdraw his entry, if you will. Right. So okay. I think in some yeah. circumstance, he definitely knows that. Yeah. Okay. It's just, I think it's sometimes the, the, well, the shoulders are never pulled back on these calls, and it almost always results in the bar, bar moving downward which should not be happening, or the bar gets braced against his thighs, which, in my opinion, should not be allowed to happen. But I do see or that. Or it's heading down at also. the down call. I'm it's sorry. Definitely, or, or it's heading down already at the down call. I mean, Correct. I see a lot yeah. of that shit. I yeah. took a still yeah. shot of one of his calls where the bar was already moving down before the judge's hand dropped. So yeah. it, it happened to be the second person. I was making breakfast that day. Of course, everything's going on in Russia, so they're way ahead of us in you know timeline they're already they're already going strong i'm making breakfast and the second person that comes up is this guy and i i was like well i'm going to take a still shot and sure enough i caught it so i don't know yeah i don't know man i and 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 you know what here's the deal this is the whole reason why i bring it up you don't need to make it that hard the crossbar makes it so easy just use a crossbar. It does, and it, it sounds to me like the person definitely has the grip strength to lift the weight up. This you person I mean? has perfectly good grip strength. He's yeah. not like, you know, the greatest in the world, but he has excellent grip strength. It's just I think there's some kind of mechanical flaw or hand size factor that, that disallows him to hold on to the bar at lockout the way that you should. Either it's a weakness or, you know, maybe, you know, the way that his fingers line up and, and his thumb and stuff like that, he just can't keep the grip on the, the, at the, on the bar at lockout. He would need to, like, work on that more intently. But, um, 
Yeah. You know, he it wouldn't even be a factor if, if they were pulling to uh, a crossbar and then just insisting upon proper control to the to the floor. Yeah. Hey, but let's circle back to that that height thing that James was talking about as far as the axle, what we would think it would need to be for what a, a five 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 person is what you were saying, James. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think because I don't want anyone to be left out. Like, I I don't know what the the you know what the height of somebody would be. I was. I was trying to get that in my head because if a if a shorter a shorter statured person took like a wide sumo stance, it wouldn't be a very long pull, now would it? No, you know? you're right, you're right. And so, what the thing is, is it's like it's like we would want to make it. We don't want to make it unfair, but then it's like you know you could have a Brian Hunsacker or something who's like six foot whatever nine or something. He go, he bends down to like say. Uh, lift up an axle, and he only has to bring it up to the same height as somebody who's five five. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But at least right. the distance that you're moving the weight is the same. So my, it's like we're going my initial it. thought to to cover it is is go with a number we already have on like some other stuff. Like, it, and this is going to sound short at first, but but given the height of the person we might be talking about, maybe even like a six inch crossbar on it, you can still pull all the way up, but I'm thinking a, a very, like I said, a very short person, short legs, doing a, 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 an axle deadlift, that it, it's really not going to move much to hit lockout. Yeah. So, what, I don't know, what do you guys think? I mean, my, my initial thought was a foot, but I actually think that's going to be too much. Right. I think it's something we'd it have might to be too high is what you're saying, a foot for yes. a five-foot fiver. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't know that they'd hit it. It's, it's, it's possible, and things like Axel and, and uh, Saxon Bar are a couple of the lifts where I think it's, it does look weird to have a crossbar. It's, mm-hmm. it's like, why are they only pulling it so high? Because it's a two-arm lift. But at the same well, time, it, you know, if, I wouldn't be bitching about it if people were saying no to bad lifts. You know? Yeah. If, if, well, I mean... I, I just wouldn't well, be. Well, I, I think I would be because, I, I don't know, it's like I think if somebody – because I think the goal is to find the person with the best grip strength. Mm-hmm. And it's like let's say we have two people and one person can pull it to the same height as the other and maybe even more weight, but they can't pull their shoulders back into a perfect lockout position. Mm-hmm. You know, their grip strength might be better, so now what are right. we measuring? I, you know, I hear you. I hear you there. Yeah, I hear now you there. we're just I mean, trying to find the best lifter with grip strength. So. Yeah, yep. And yeah. Axel's something where if if uh, if I step wrong and throw my back out the day before a contest, my axle just went down probably 150 pounds. Whereas yeah. you know other lifts that are one hand lifts, I can row to the six inch or seven and a half inch mark. You know, pinch and thick bar lifts. I can row to six and seven and a half, and I mean, I might set a world record that day, and my yeah. back is still fucked up. So yeah. you know. We've mentioned this on the show, too, with regards to – you even see it with, like, people doing a a double overhand deadlift, for example, that's going to be at the top end of what their body strength would be or even their grip strength would be. When your hand starts to – you know, your body wants to hold on to things, it does weird things. Your back rounds, your shoulders shrug up, all kinds of crazy shit happens. And you might get that thing up, but you don't have a prayer of doing all that other crap that's required. You know, yeah. it's just, it's those max efforts turn you into some funky looking thing up at the top. And that's, I mean, we might be kind of seeing that same thing too, you know, I, I, just floating that one out there. But nonetheless, I, I think the crossbar completely gets rid of all that crap. I think that's a so. huge thing, dude. I think, I think the reason that this person can't bring their shoulders back is because they're creating so much tension in, in their grip that there's no way that they can shut off the tension in their pecs. And you know, and that kind of stuff because they uh, they're so tight there. There's no way they can shut it off and, yeah. and then turn on the upper back. It's just not going to huge happen. huge compensation patterns. Yeah, you know, yeah. you you, you want to get that up. Your body's just gonna your mind shuts down, and all the rest of the crap takes over. You know, you, yep. you just don't have a chance. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Agreed. Well, I mean, we don't have to spend too much time on that, and everybody has their own opinion. Um, I mean, yeah. that's, that's mine. I mean, I think you just make it a lot easier uh, just going with crossbar lifts. But, you know, those guys, and the, again, that league happens to use, like, basically all lockout lifts. So I'm sure they're yeah, not. Yeah, and, and again, that. notice it's, it's two-handed lifts, you know. But, you know, what, we, what would really help on this, too, is, you know, we, we speculate. I wouldn't want to create 
automatically just create work for anybody. But if a, if a guy like Luke, you know, at Arm Assassin was sitting around one day, you know, all caught up on his orders, had a little bit of scrap metal laying around, and whip up something quick. Just say, hey, why not, you know, and see. And then, yeah. you know, the speculation's over, right? It, it, it either looks like shit or it works freaking awesome and everybody loves it, and then it's just, you know, no more debate. That's just how it works out in my mind. But, again, I'm, I'm speaking for what Luke does on his free time. He'd probably be, be sitting in the woods or fishing or something, you know, but <laughs> that's how my brain works anyway. Yeah, I hear yeah. you. Well, uh, I, that's all that I wanted to say, Jane. Was there anything else that you wanted to talk about, James, or we could move on the to only- the the only thing I would say is I know uh, Melissa Dingy set a world record on the uh, silver bullet hold there, and that Tony oh, yeah. Merkel had a gold in the Rolling Thunder. It was 108 kilograms, and he won four silvers. So how hard, definitely. how hard must that Rolling Thunder have been? And, and I know, for that right? matter, the number four gripper because um, what's 100 and well, what's 108 kilos? How how much is that? Uh, that so it's 220, be... and then eight kilos is. 16, like 17.6 or something, so 237. Eh, yeah. Maybe the rolling thunder. 237.6? Yeah. So, um, well, it must have been hard because Tanner had said that it was, that 108 felt a lot harder than it should have for him. Yeah. So. And I guess so I was yeah, going with tanks. A... Tanks numbers were way down too. So. Yeah. But uh, also, he only got like 15 seconds or something like that on the number four. For the silver bullet, fifteen, nineteen. I don't. I don't know. I'm not sure. But um, that's under his average, I would say, for for that too. So it might have been a pretty hard number four. For sure. Either way, he did. He did awesome, which we all all expect. Glad he flew to Russia. <laughs> There's probably a lot of variables there for him. Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Um, but yeah, uh, I saw that from Melissa Dingy as well. Um, my boy Jason was over there and had kind of a rough competition. Everything started off pretty pretty rough for them, with like a twelve, something like a seven or a twelve hour delay in Chicago on the, like for their first flight or something. Oh, can't even imagine. Yeah. You know the the for the foreshadowing of what could come when you start out with that big of a flight delay. I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Did we hear? Did we hear from Nigel at all? How he did? I did not hear from Nigel. That I recall. No. Uh, I didn't even see pictures of him. No. You, you guys see anything? No. 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 He. I saw him come back and do like uh, every minute on the minute, uh, ten rounds of like multi multi joint complex training, but I didn't see any grip stuff at all. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So uh the 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 next topic we're gonna cover is uh I don't know, how how would you how would you wrap this up, Alan? You I thought you did a pretty good pretty good job of it. It's based on some comments that came along from Randy Gentry Gentry on the uh bottom of one of my recent videos, but how would how would you wrap all this up into a summarized topic? Well, you know, if, if somebody were were looking to get into into you know uh, grip strength, grip feats. You know you would want to know. You would want an idea of of what you were striving for. You know if you were if you were just coming into it. In my yeah. mind, you know what are the things? What are the what are the stepping stones? What are people trying to actually achieve through it all? What's the what's the main lifts that you know? What kind of numbers are people hitting? The the as I worded it, what are the types of things that people are doing that that indicate they have arrived? You know, what oh, kind yeah. of gripper are you shutting? You know, um, you know, these guys, they're not just pinching two twenty five pound plates, right? What are these t- what are the sort of things these people are doing? The top end guys, you know, not the not the entry level people, but the the, the big names, the people we're hearing about, okay. the the guys that get the attention. What are these okay, people so doing? What are we striving for? I heard it I read it a little bit different. I almost thought it was like, you know, what are the gatekeeper type feats? What are the feats that are are respectable, but uh, but yeah. So you're saying it's like what is the top one percent of the one percent kind of? Well, thing? well no. I, but I guess I, I I don't know that we're not we're not necessarily in the in the in the same thing here though. You know, um, it's like I, I guess I'm kind of thinking head turner type of things. You know, like for example, oh, okay. I see a guy pinching two thirty fives. It's like, well, yeah, 
But then the guy that's pinching 245 is like, okay, this guy's got a grip on him, right? Sure, you know, the guy sure. lifting maybe the 125-pound thick dumbbell? Well, you know, I don't know, but the guy picking up the inch? Yeah. You know, yeah. that shit's the real deal. That kind of thing, you know. Um, I'm not thinking like a number two gripper close, for example. I'm thinking anybody that's mashing like a, like a number three from parallel set on up, you know, GHP7. Thing, those, are, those are the kind of things that I'm thinking about, okay. you know. Okay, okay. So, all right. Well, I took you know, this from a completely different angle, so I guess. Oh, and that's and that's fine. That on the fly. <laughs> sure. No. No. Yeah. I, I mean, but, but yeah, that's great. I don't know. Maybe we'll see what Jed was thinking too. But well, um, let me read down the questions so that everybody knows exactly what we're pulling from, and then once I get through that, then James, let's hear where you came from in comparison to what Alan just said. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So. This is, and everybody can see this on, the, on my video, why so many events challenges in grip sport. And I can't remember who even asked the question about that, to be honest with you. It might be in the video. But Randy Gentry says, this helps some, dot, 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 hoped you were going to address the respect issue. That's what really bothers me. So I didn't know what he meant. I was like, respect issue? Like, did I, yeah, somehow I didn't either. Yeah. disrespect people? I, di I didn't know what he meant. So, um so I said, I said, what respect issue? And he goes, the overabundance of variables creates excuses for invalidating the lift. So you get, that's easier because, or yeah, but it's smaller, or whatever excuse the variable creates. To us noobs, it's not so clear what is a respectable lift. It's kind of, it kind of takes the fun out of it. And I said, Randy, I don't understand what you're saying. I'm sorry. I said, I asked a peer to help me with what you are asking, and I think I have a better grip on it now. But can you give me an example? And that's where you had said what you said, Alan. So Randy says, that's okay. I guess it's something that will be an epiphany one day because I can pick up a brake rotor and train, but convincing someone that it was difficult won't happen. I guess what I'm really asking is, what are the most respected ways, pinch lift, block lift, rolling handle, only thing that I'm sure of is gripper. I said, that's what we covered in the twig episode on rolling handles, which was um, episode 85. He goes, mm -hmm. I'll give it a listen. Um, he goes, are you talking twig 90? And I said, the link is in the description box. Um, twig 85 yeah. was actually the lockout issue. So I, I, I don't know what twig it was that we talked about um, the various rolling handles. So then uh, Jesse Pinonin comes in and talks. And... Uh, uh, Dascons, Jason Gonzalez comes in and says, I think I get what Randy is saying. It's like if the non-gripster thinks they have a strong grip, then they should try XYZ Gripplement to quantify the non-gripster hand strength. Yeah, and, that's, uh, that's where I kind of, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, so Randy says, yes, exactly. Example, if I were to test, show off, pinch strength, what would be the most respected lift to prove it with? Oh, so the most I still think there's some like dancing back and forth there like sure. like around you know i'm not saying that he's changing his story or anything i'm just saying like he it almost seems like he hasn't truly pinpointed what he wanted us to talk about yeah, i was i was way off on it in the end my assumption was was totally different i i was thinking he was talking about like inconsistency in hubs or flasks or something like that is almost See, that's what i thought he was it. talking about like yeah i because the last question, the first question he asked, I should say, the first question he asked had something to do with, like, the barrier of entry into grip sport, which is yeah. something that comes up all the time on, on the grip board. I've heard Gil Goodman talk about it, stuff like that. Because um, Randy was talking about there's so many events, there's so many things to work on, and it makes mm -hmm. it just impossible. So what I was saying was don't worry about doing all of them and only work on the events for your upcoming contest. Don't think you have to buy all the all the equipment that's out here so that you're prepared for every single grip contest sure. because that's yeah. never going to happen. Um, and then uh, Jason comes in and says, question for next video, and I think this might be the way to look at this. If a non-gripster claims to have a strong grip, what feet or lift should they be able to perform to quantify their claim? I know it's a yeah. broad question considering the different facets of grip strength there are. So, and that's, that's where I came from. That's exactly yeah. where I came from, yeah. So, and Alan, you were way off. So you don't even get to talk anymore. The rest. I was of way off. Yes. Yep. <laughs> well, why don't we discuss both? We can discuss both. Yeah, we can discuss both. Absolutely. Yeah. What were you going to yeah. say in response to Alan's um, first uh, feats that he mentioned, Jason? What were you thinking? Uh, I said Jason. Uh, I meant James. Sorry about that. That's right. You you mean the ones that would be like the pinnacle feats? 
Like the food um, center. Well, like... So, like, so Alan had mentioned, like, 245's pinch, and then inch dumbbell lift. And you said that you were thinking about it in a little bit different way. So what way were well, you yeah, thinking about it? Maybe just the way I was thinking indoors. about it was, was more in the other way, that, like, if, if somebody, like, a great example, we have this guy uh, named Porkchop that started training with us. His name's Steve uh, uh, Sam Niago, and he is a strong guy. He's a Filipino guy. We joke with him that he looks Samoan because he does. But, uh, but he's, he, he came over and, like, you know, he started doing some of, of, of the feats. He wanted to arm wrestle. He's a big guy. He's about 300, you know, but he's short. He's like 5'7", maybe, 5'8", but he's, he's put together. He's not like a really overweight 300. He's a really put-together guy. Well, he came over and, like, he was able to, to squeeze uh, together and, and pick up the two 50-pound scale weights. He, he was able to lift the 135-pound uh, globe bell, like the baby inch bell. Um, he actually got the inch about three or four inches off the ground with both hands with no deload. Um, wow. He, he, he couldn't lock out 235's pinch, but he came close. And he almost, he almost hugged a 45-pound plate, a four-spoke one, which is actually not an easy four-spoke to, to hub. So, You're talking so about, he, uh, yeah, by the hub, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he's, he, you know, here's a guy who's a mechanic, and he's a strong man, like he's loading 300-pound stones to his shoulder. He's a strong guy, uh, stronger than, you know, the top 1% of the population and, you know, probably close to that in terms of people who lift. And, you know, so I was looking at it almost like gateway feats. Like, I think, I think if you had a guy who could pinch, like, two 15-kilogram plates or two 35-pound plates, you know, I'd say that would be a good place to start. I know I couldn't do it when I started. I was close. Like, I could get them off the ground, but I couldn't lock them out. Um, I think uh, being able to close a number two gripper from – you know, a, a deeper set just for someone starting out is it says, you know, you got pretty good hand strength because, you know, you pass around a number two gripper to most people at the gym. They're not going to, they're not going to know what to do with it, especially if it's, you know, rated in the one tens to one twenties, you know, um, <clears throat> what's up? Go ahead. No, no, um, no, you, you go, you go ahead and finish. I've got a, okay. a completely different thing. Here for this. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. I think if, if, you know, for most the most part, people with strong hands who come over the first time, they can just about hub a 35, a good three-spoke 35. So, so it's like, you know, I think those are some of it. Maybe a 35 to 40-pound blob would be, you know, pretty good hand strength, I think, you know, for somebody just kind of coming into it that's, you know, wants to prove good grip strength. Um, that, that's the way that I looked at it. But are those like the pinnacle feats? Absolutely not. But I think if somebody came over and they pinched 235s and lifted, say, a 35 or 40-pound blob and then lifted a 135-pound globe bell with like a two-and-a-half-inch handle, you know, and, and, and hugged a 35, I'd say that was a, that's a guy with some pretty strong hands, you know. Well, yeah, and what what I was actually going to say, James, was that Jed, you've actually done a video on this. You you explained this before. This what, was a like, question uh, uh, on one of your show. On it wasn't on this week in grip. It was like one of those driving with napalm kind of things. You covered yeah. it. Somebody asked you this, and you were like, "Yeah, it said something about like closing a number two. I mean, you laid it out. Right. Uh, so this I has been right like, now that you say that. Yeah, um, yep. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't, really, I didn't remember that. So, until right not now, that this but, doesn't have merit, but you you answered this person's question. <laughs> you know, like what the guy was asking. This is out there. You know, yeah. so well. So yeah, I have a lot of videos up. He may not have seen them, and I don't know when Randy sure, came aboard sure. as far as a regular viewer. I, you know, and I it's not it's not dissimilar what, from what James is saying, and I I definitely don't disagree with that. I, I you show up with that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. a. I think you got a strong grip. Yeah, I just complete. I misunderstood. Yeah. Well, it's all right. You, you, I mean, you, uh, I don't disagree with what you said. I mean, those feats are, you know, if if a dude is walking off the street and picks the inch dumbbell up, then 
you know, that's a guy that I want to start coming on a regular basis because I want to see what else he's capable of doing. And that actually yeah. happened one time up in Sayre in the old diesel crew days, back in like the early 2000s. We had the inch dumbbell laying out, this big dude, big black guy, huge hands, looked like he might have been like one time a pro football player, walks out, hey, what, what are you guys doing? We were doing strongman stuff. Um, he had, uh, we had a keg out. We had the inch laying there. He strolled right over, picked the inch dumbbell up. We never saw him again. <laughs> So, uh, I mean, we told him, we're like, listen, you know, he had his kids with him, you know, um, he talked with us for a while. We said, we're here every Saturday. If you want to come up, feel free to let us know. We gave him our number, never saw the guy again. So like, yeah. that's the lesson You didn't there buy is, any tougher shit. Get the person's yeah. number. Get the person's number who lifts the inch because you can give your, your, your phone number, your email address, your business card to everybody you want to. You don't know if they're ever going to look at that thing again. You've got to get the person's number. There's the lesson there. Yeah. But, sure. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where I was going with that. But, I mean, it does happen. It does happen that people are able to do extraordinary things. But I, I think I would be pretty darn impressed with someone that could just do, you know, you know a 100-pound thick bar. You know, even a shot loadable, a shot loadable dumbbell, hundred pounds. Sure. You know, if they if they walked in, I'd be like, "Jeepers, dude!" I mean, that's that seems pretty, pretty good to me. Um, you know, and I'm I'm always like, if they can pinch three tens, which most people can probably pinch three tens, but like if I get someone in there and they pinch three tens and it seems like they're kind of into it, like I'm, I kind of blow smoke up their ass. I'm like, dude, that's that's pretty good. I'd love to see what else you can do. You know. Um, sure. So, you know, that's that's another part of it too. I, I'm I'm happy to see anybody, you know, give it a try and stuff. And it's nice when they when they keep coming back. So, I don't Most know. Most definitely. Um, you know, I was I wrote down some other stuff because so I was thinking like I was pulling from my experience when I first found out about grippers. I used to take them to work and hand them hand them to people, and mm-hmm. uh, it was kind of two reasons to see how strong they were and then I could show them how strong I was like oh you can't close this gripper watch me show you how it's done but um there were only like a couple people ever when I did that that actually closed a number one gripper and I I never showed anybody any form I never showed them any set stuff you know I don't even know if I knew the set back then so um and I do remember a couple people closing the one so even like with crappy form Shutting a number one gripper, I'd, I'd be like, "Damn, this dude's got some potential." Yeah. Now, if you show him, if you show him the gripper set, you know, it it might be like all the way up to like a two point five for me to to think that they've, you know, it, I, it, 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 to me the set makes such a big difference that if they're not up around a two or a two point five, then with the set, then maybe their hands aren't necessarily that strong. We'd have to try a couple other feats and see. But, um, yep. you know, it was raw, put the gripper in your hand and close it. If they're closing the number one, that's more impressive to me than if they close like a two or a 2.5 of the set. Yeah. I would say so, too. I mean, maybe not a 2.5. I think it would depend on the rating. But, but yeah, mm-hmm. I, I think just like kind of no set closing or just just – just putting it in your hand and closing it. Yeah, I mean, that that's most people aren't doing that with the number one because I used to take my grippers to uh, the gym when I went to Gold's. And, you know, there were some pretty big dudes in there that would want to mess around with them. And, yeah, I mean, maybe a couple of them closed a, a one, you know what I mean, or a one five, but, like, nobody closed a two or anything above that. Right. So, yeah. So, like, if somebody showed up at, at, at training, though, and they closed – a two, and you showed him a set and closed a two, I'd be like, that's pretty good, man, because, you know, I'd have thought to myself, well, I probably couldn't have done that. You know, but the first time I tried to pick up five tens, I was able to do that. So Really? So it's like, you know, yeah, yeah, Bob brought him over to my house back in, like, 2009 when I wasn't even thinking about grip. He brought him over, and Jason and I were, you know, we were just arm wrestling back then, and, and he was like, yeah, just try to pinch these, and and uh, we pinched him, and it was like, "Whoa, cool! That's cool." You know what I mean? I think that's I think that's really, really, really good. I, I've only I, I wasn't able to do five tens for a long, long time. I, I mean, I mean, a couple of years. 
that and 245s, I mean, it took me a long time to get. And I haven't seen a lot of people, even with really nice fives that, like, fit together nicely and have good texture, I've only yeah. ever seen, like, a couple dudes that were able to do that the first time that they walked in the gym. So, uh, to me, that's that's really that's really up there. Five ten. Well, it's weird because it, all the other grip feats, like he brought the inch that day. I remember that. And like, because what it was was Scott George was arm wrestling with us on a regular basis, and he said, "Well, you know, there's a guy named Bob Sundin that lives like you know 20 minutes from here, you know, who does grip, and he's got all kinds of great stuff. He's going to bring him over." I was like, "Yeah, that sounds good." You know, that was the day we met Bob, and he brought over, yeah, he brought over his inch bell. He brought over, like, two uh, milled York 45s. He brought over uh, uh, 510s or six. I think he had six tens. But the only one, there was one arm wrestler named Mike Gianelli that was able to float him off the ground, the six tens, without a pipe in him or anything. Mm. But, uh, yeah, Mike just, yeah, he just tried it. He never even got the five tens. But, uh, but Jason wow. and I locked out the five tens, and uh, yeah, then we didn't do grip again until we hooked up with Bob in like whatever it was two thousand thirteen or fourteen. So, what about you, time. Alan? Were you able to do five tens when you first started? I- I've actually never tried five tens. You've never tried so, five tens? No, no. It's um, that's just none of those. It was never interesting to me. I was always the. I was the block weight blob kind of thing. Hubs, the yeah. five tens just didn't fit in there. Um, I did, I did buy um, a bunch of, I did buy five tens from Play It Again Sports. The intention of actually doing that at one point, but I've never even, I've never even put them together to take an attempt at it. Wow, well that'd be interesting. But I, w- I would, I would, I would say though that, that no, I couldn't do it though. That would have been my. Uh, based on everything else when I started, there's there's nothing to make me think that I could have done that. Yeah. Well, well if you're lifting blobs now, you'd be able to do it. Because it's like, I mean, I got, when I finally lifted the six 11-pound plates, the five-kilogram plates with the pipe through them, you know, I mean, you're looking at whatever that weighs, like 70 pounds. That was the same week I was able to finally lift the blob. So it's like, if you're lifting a blob, then you know, five tens loose, I think you'd be able to, you know, depending on the width of them, but yeah. Dude, you had do you know that I lifted the blob the first time I ever saw it, and I still couldn't do five tens. It was wow. a long time after. I bet it was about a year. I bet yeah. it was about a year before I could do five tens. That's so weird. I know. Because it's Bob's it's crazy. I get that all the time. I, and I, like, I, I lifted the inch dumbbell, and I could only do like 180 pounds on the original style Rolling Thunder. <laughs> well, isn't that's crazy, too, because like, yeah. you know, uh, on a regular, rolling, on a regular um, uh, a wrist wrench, I think Juji Mufu was doing like 80-something pounds, and he lifted your inch. Yeah, and here I am, you know, <laughs> almost cracking 101, and I can't lift the damn thing. I hate that goddamn inch dumbbell. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, look, I'm like an anomaly. Like I couldn't close number one <laughs> for uh, at least several weeks, man. At least several yeah. weeks. I mean, I didn't know the set. I didn't know like placing it and all that stuff. I was kind of doing like a like a spring holding set, and then like working your fingers around there, try to get them in a good spot. Mm-hmm. It's That's still what we all like did. Two, two, three weeks. <laughs> two, three weeks. I hear about people. I think Luke closed the number one the first time he was here. So, like, yeah. you know. Um, <clears throat> well, I closed it, it, the it one. Almost, it, it's hard for me to even talk about this stuff because a lot of this crap was way harder for me than most people, and some of it was way easier. It's really weird. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it is. I guess it is. I mean, you know, it's just like uh, this this pork chop guy that's been coming to training. It's like, you know, he he's he can't. He, you know, the first thing he tried to do was to pinch the two thirty fives, and he had a hard time with that. You know, but he's got he's got good sized hands. And then you know he walks over to the inch before he even walks over to the one thirty five because he didn't know which was which, and he grabs it and he lifts it a good four or five inches off the ground. Wow. And then he and he switches hands and he does it again before it comes out. And Bob and I are looking at each other like, what the hell? You know what I mean? Like, crazy. crazy. Like, that, yeah. That, 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 that kind of shows that there's no one litmus test, you know. Right. Because to be no, able to, be able to get the inch that high, but then not the 235s, you know, that, that's, a, 
That's a surprise. I, I would have seen. I, I would have. I would have guessed the guy would have been pinching two thirty fives well before he'd been breaking the inch off the ground. You know. So there's like. Yeah. I think there's multiple things you need to. Yeah, you can't just count on one thing to determine. That's for sure. Yeah, you can't. Mm. And I mean, I don't know. Like, if you're talking about like, if you're talking about like a certain level that you want to get to or something that you aim to. I mean, I know for me, there's certain things that I want to maintain or at least be above in, in specific feats at all times, you know. Do you know what I'm saying by that? Yeah, you don't I want do. to slide below a certain level or else you, you feel yeah. like you're going backwards, right? Like you can maintain yep. at a certain level and you might not go up, but you don't want to be below that level because then you're going to feel like a turd. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Which is why, like, I mean, I'm not really training pinch the way that I was, you know, but because I went so, you know, balls out on thick bar, but I'm still at the end of training going over to my 45s and, and doing pulls with both hands to make sure that I can maintain it. You know what I mean? That, that might have been a good way to describe this is what makes you a true grip guy versus not, you know. Okay. Maybe something like that. You know what I'm saying? What's a, what's a, what's a gripster doing that a non-gripster isn't? Right? Training grip once or twice a week. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know what I'm saying. Certainly, yeah. certainly, we should be doing something that the non gripster isn't. You know what I'm saying. There's a not really? not the line in the sand, so to speak, but there there should be a big difference. You know. Well, I, I've seen certain things definitely have more visual impact. Like I think if a great example, like if you want to prove to somebody that you know you you have a, a strong grip and you want it to have visual impact, like if you bend a 60D nail or if you tear a deck of cards, it doesn't even matter what deck of cards it is. You know what I mean? It could be, you know, something you get at the dollar store. And if you tear a, a phone book that's at least decently thick for them, you know, they're going to look at that and be like, whoa. You know what I mean? Right, but, right. But, but I wouldn't, you know, I mean, none of us would consider those incredibly hard grip feeds unless it's a really thick phone book you know it's it's a really stiff deck of like plastic coated cards or something and it's like yeah, at it's least just, a red nail you it's know? Just crap we do for fun yeah <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so I, I don't know I, I still feel like the topic is a little vague it's kind of all over the place but you guys understand what I'm saying yeah, I definitely do, and, and I agree with I agree with your um, your assessment too. I think that's I, I think that's that's reasonable. Guy shows up uh, doing that kind of stuff. He he does have a strong grip. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. But but why don't we take it from from Alan's angle too, the Alan's original angle, the one that he, uh, well, yeah. he described. I mean, the phone call. like you know, you're dealing with a badass if they can do these things. Yeah. Well, that or you know, yeah, exactly. like you, you look at the guys, look look at the look at the top tier guys in our sport. You know, you take you know Jed, Luke, Cody, Gill, all these guys, right? The, a lot of these things are in their pockets. You know, the blob lifting, you know, pinching forty fives, right? Closing threes. These things are just happening, you know. And and that's what I was thinking. It's like a guy lifts an inch. Well, there's easy inches and there's hard inches, but they're all hard in one way or another. You know, you can you can sure. discount variability yeah. on these things. Yeah, so, absolutely. and that was part of my, part of my thinking too, with what um, the fellow said in your comment section, he was talking about variability. Well, you're pinching 245s. I don't care where you got them from. They're still freaking yeah, hard, exactly. you know? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. and that was kind of, that was kind of my angle too. Likewise, you're shutting a number three. Well, even if it's a, a, a three with, it's really on no, nothing more than a, a two and a half spring, you know, it's yeah, still freaking hard as hell. In the 30s. And, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it, it, yeah. and that's that's where I was coming from. Is is hard is still hard, even though it's an easier level of the hardness. So sure. you know, two forty fives. You know, fat man blob, inch dumbbell. You know, things like that. You know, I mean, I, I, certainly a guy pinching two fifty fives or you know two twenty five kilo plates. It's like, yeah, that that shit's tough. You know, and yeah, that's my kind of me. thing. What do, you know? What I mean, what what are you guys thinking? Well, and you, you know what, what kind of rules it out? again, and I thought that's where he was coming from. Like the he was, I almost thought he was saying it was very frustrating because there's so much variability between like, because I've talked about like the different generations of Rolling Thunder, you know. Oh, definitely. Um, you know, and how how like you know my 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 number might drop 20 pounds, you know, taking one out of the package, 
So, or yep. like um, this also happened, I think, right around the time that I took the red pill out and lifted that, and I couldn't get it the first time because the uh, the paint was so slick, the chalk wouldn't stick, yeah. and then also the the paint was actually coming off onto my hand. So I didn't know if maybe he was talking about that, and if it, if he is, you know, the the surface of something, just the same exact blob or the same exact inch that surface can change and become a variable that you have to contend with just based on the environmental conditions where you're at at that time. So yep. if, if, I take the, if I take the inch to an air-conditioned area where there's no moisture in the air, you know, that, the, the chalk is not going to stick to the handle anywhere near as well as if I take it right out in the grass in the morning, get it all dewy, and then apply chalk. The, the chalk, yeah. the way it adheres, is going to be totally different in those two situations. And for me, I'm going to get better pulls on it on, in the moist air out in, with sure. the dew on the handle versus with, um, you know, in the air conditioning. So, yep. um, you know, just that is something to be aware of for variability that's totally out of our control that has nothing to do with the, with the sport itself. I mean, honestly, there are more pieces of equipment coming out all the time, I'm sure, in June, we will see a new grip equipment come out on the market, and some people will feel the urge to buy that grip equipment. And I tell those people, don't feel that you have to buy everything. If, if nope. that seems like a frustration for you, then stop doing that. Stop buying every piece of equipment that's out on the market because you need to put some time and focus on, on implements in order to master them, in order to lift them, you know? But I think people have have this thing where they like they see something new on the market and they buy it and if that's the case with mr gentry then you know i would look at that as that approach as a way to as something that you want to change because i I can see that becoming super super frustrating as as a new person i would rather see the person stick with grip and get good at like two or three implements and really see themselves grow get some momentum before they go and buy all these other things that come out on the market um you know, it's it, you get too distracted. It, shiny object syndrome. Yeah, well, you get too di- you, you get too distracted because it's like, I mean, I found it this way too. It's like if I'm training for one specific thing, I'm going to make a lot more gains in that thing than if I have like four or five different things I'm trying to to or, or goals I'm trying to reach and grip at the same time. Yeah, that just gets frustrating. I find myself plateauing a lot when I do that. Absolutely. So for me, yeah. it's like, all right, I was laser guided on the 55s, right? Pinch those. And then, you know, I wanted to pinch them with my right. Still hasn't happened, you know? But then I was laser guided on the inch this year. So it's like, you know, that's, that's it. It's like other stuff can be, it's just ancillary. Like anything I do outside of that is, is secondary. It's the inch, you know? Yep. Right. So... Yeah, that laser so, yeah, focus yeah. is important. It really is. Yeah, because if you if you just distract yourself with too many things, it's you're just going to get frustrated. Like if if you're training to 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 lift the inch, and you know the next event has the moon top in it, and I know I'm sorry, Alan. I know you love the moon top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe don't put too much emphasis on the moon top, and and you know prioritize your goals. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I think if, if you're not competing, you don't need any of that crap, you know, find yeah. out what you actually like and just stick with it. You know, everything else sure. is just, it's what the hell's the point, you know, I mean, get get a couple yeah. of basic things and you're good to go and work on what you want to work on. But yeah, the rest of it is just, it's simply that you're going to bring it out one training cycle, use it at one competition that's just going to sit there and get chalk dust on it. You won't exactly. even be able to find it after a while. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't even worry about some of that crap. But uh, unless you're a collector, I think that got brought up in, in Jed's video, and I'm definitely guilty of that, right. you know, picking yeah, up stuff fine. just for the sake of having it. I'm a, I'm a sucker when it comes to block weights. That's a big downfall of mine or, or hubble plates. More. I just got two more this, this weekend. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. What, you, you know, one other thing I, I got guilty of early on, too, I'm sure other people can go along with this, too, but you'll see the guys that are stronger than you doing the things you want to be doing you want to be training the way they're training, right? So you'll buy some of the shit that they're using. And that kind of helps you, you know, you start 
piling up a bunch of crap that way too. That's how I wound up with crap like a pop script machine and all this stuff, which I'm not saying it's bad, but it just sits there. You know, you don't use half the crap. You use it for a little while like, oh, okay, this didn't do anything, <laughs> you know. So that, that's, that, that winds up giving you a big pile of equipment. But, yeah, in the grand scheme of it, I only use a few things regularly these days. So most of the rest of it is just around. It comes out when uh, uh, Devin shows up, <laughs> then everything gets brought out. But, uh, yeah, yep. otherwise just extra. <laughs> <clears throat> but I can't bear yeah. to see it go. <laughs> no. I'd rather it sit on the shelf than to, than to get rid of it. I know I'd miss it. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I have I have three different grip machines. Um, I have the Pops, I have the T-Rex, and I also have one that's like maybe from York Barbell or something like that. It's like, or a TDS machine. It's, you know, the guillotine style grip machines. Haven't, haven't oh, yep. used any of them in, in years. I also have two secret weapons. Mm-hmm. Um, really? Yeah. I have the hardy handshake. I bought it in the 90s because I thought it was going to help me arm wrestling because I didn't know anything about grip strength. Hell, I didn't know anything <laughs> about arm wrestling at that point. But I just I saw the hardy handshake in the Iron Mind uh, catalog, and I was like, I'm getting this, you know. And, yeah, I don't, yep. I don't know how much I've used it, but I know I haven't used it in close to 20 years. So. They're great for throwing like your T-shirt over, you know, <laughs> rags and things like that. You know, that that's how it happens for me anyway. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, the drying rack. It's how the the treadmill turns into a, a drying rack when you don't want to stick your nice shirt into the the dryer. You you stick it on the the treadmill. Yep. Same with your, same with your uh, hangers on it. Yeah. Your guillotine grip machine. <laughs> wow. Well, maybe that's a good a good episode too is to talk about like, well, you know, if if you were going to get uh, uh, specific items, if you know, to 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 train with, and maybe limit them to five, you know, what would they be? Oh, I could. Yeah, that is. I, I could get very specific on that one. Yep. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that would be a good one. Jed, like, I'm sure Jed would bring like an inch or something. Like, you know, I, I wouldn't do that for my, for for me because, you know, and maybe I should. I mean, I deload the inch when I train with it, but, but no, I mean, I would have a rolling handle like a trilobite or, or you know, a crusher, you know, for me. Maybe the trilobite because I could adjust the, the handle size, for example, you know. But uh, no, that would yeah. be a good one. Three different opinions on that. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like you know, otherwise people are going to go out and you know they're going to, you know they're going to be like, oh wow, there's uh, the stub is in the next event. Let me uh, let me get the half penny and the and the stub and the you know and the uh, the oh, what's the other with the the stirrup and you know it's like. Well, no. Nobody has ever said that sentence. That's not a real sentence. <laughs> that has never been uttered. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm hating on people now. I don't mean to hate on people. I'm just saying that, you know, there's a limited amount of equipment that you need. Like, I look at my grip workouts, and I'm not saying I'm, like, one of the greatest or anything, but, I mean, what do I have? I have a trilobite I train with. I have, you know, some plates that I pinch and... I usually just add a pipe through the plates and add weight to that. Um, you know, I'm using a wrist wrench, uh, you know, occasionally grippers, but that is only if, like, I'm going to a, an event and I'm, like, two months out of it, then I'll start doing some grippers, you know. But uh, I'll, I'll hub plates, you know, and I'll, I'll usually do some wide pinch with some tens with a pipe through them and add some weight. That's, that's like, the extent of it. You That's know, all you need. Senses with a rubber band, yeah. Yeah, especially yeah. if you're crunched for time. The more simple you can yeah. make it, the, the better it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Oh, and That's hammers. what I'm running into nowadays. You know, I'll train hammers too, but uh, but that's it. That's really it. Nice. Yeah, what well, well, was good hearing a different perspective on that, um, what Randy Gentry mentioned in the comments there. Because I uh, I definitely took it all the wrong the wrong way. Oh. Yeah, I think. Well, I don't know if you did. I didn't. I didn't know what the hell was going on either. When I was reading the 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 little conversation we were having, I was like, "What is he saying?" And then I went back and I read I read Randy's comment. And I was like, 
well, maybe he's saying this. And then I didn't keep going back to the comments to see what other people said. So I had stopped too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. Well, I didn't even realize. See, one thing that happens with YouTube, and uh, I figured this out when Tommy and I were having issues, is once someone like replies to themselves once or twice, you won't get notifications anymore when they when they reply again. So I didn't even know until going down there that uh, Jesse Pinonen actually responded again in that thread i hadn't even seen that because i never got a response like there's some funky stuff with youtube man it's it's kind of frustrating yeah. sometimes especially when you're having a knock down drag out fight with somebody you know you want to stay <laughs> on top of it and then you realize that you've been leaving the guy hanging for three hours so <clears throat> it's really not the best way to do it and i'm, I'm glad Tommy and i ended up getting on the phone with that but uh yeah well, it's good to let him stew once in a while <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure I'm sure that's what that's what happens, but um, <laughs> it just sucks. Like, why why shut off commu like notifications on something? It could be like a really important topic, and then you don't see them again, and you won't right. until you go back and check that that video out. So, I think For we sure. covered that pretty well, guys. I don't. I still don't know if we hit it exactly from the angle that Randy wanted, but we kind of came at it from like two or different angle, uh, two, well, two or three different angles. So hopefully it yeah. helps him out. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe he'll chime in. He seems to be a regular listener. Yeah. Yeah. yeah hopefully sure. he listens to this one too. And I'll try to, I'll try to respond to one of his comments on a different video to let him know we covered this once I get the episode up and hopefully he can go through it. So. Yeah. Man. Well, the first time I read it, I was thinking about the respect thing and I was like, I was like, oh, man, because cause on the, the previous one that we had with Rob Vigent, um, you know, he had made a comment about the king's move and respectability, and, and I just kind of basically said, you know, the king's move is bullshit and it deserves no respectability at all. There's no respect. <laughs> it is bullshit. Had for it. And, and I thought, I, for, some, for some reason, I was worried that maybe that's, you know, because I didn't mean for that to come across as, like, really negative towards him. And I, I think... I think he got that, but I was really just basically saying that the move itself is bullshit and it's not arm wrestling. And I know we live in a politically correct age, but stand up and arm wrestle like a man, damn it. And that's it. <laughs> yeah. so, so anyway, I'm done. <laughs> well, I think we covered that pretty good detail, guys. Um, that'll pretty much Absolutely. wrap up the call. Um, but understand everybody that's listening. Alan, James, and I have some really cool topics coming your way. We've been discussing stuff for the upcoming shows. We've got a list that we're developing. And also, for episode 100, we've got an idea that we think you're really going to be excited about. So make sure you subscribe so that you end up getting that and all the future videos that are put up on the channel. And um, I even had a, a pretty, we even had a couple ideas come up for other topics to be discussed as we go forward. So lots of good, cool, fun stuff coming your way, not just me bitching about bad lockout calls. So <clears throat> stay tuned, everybody. And uh, the show's your guy, yours, guys. Go ahead and say whatever you want to. No, all right. you, well, that's, I'm out, all right. Well, that's it for episode 94 of This Week in Grip. Hope everybody liked it. Uh, make sure to keep using the hashtags. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Comment down below, and we'll be back next week with another one. We'll see you then.